Hey, everybody, welcome to FIST, or P-H-Y-S-T, the unfortunate acronym for our happy little conversation we're having about internet content. Pastor, have you seen this is what it represents? And this is where a pastor of Allen Creek Community Church, either me or Alex, con- comment on internet content that you send us. And you can send us your internet content, if you like, to this address right here, past- or social, not pastor, social at ac3.org. And we'd be happy to comment on it. It's just a cold take. Haven't given any thought to it. Haven't seen it. So that's just the idea is this to get a really, you know, top of mind response to something that makes the rounds on the Internet. So what would a pastor have to say about this video that we're going to watch right here? Question for you, man. Is this your Lamborghini? Yeah. Is this your Lamborghini? Is this your Lamborghini? It is. Could I interview you real quick? I have a channel with 7 million followers. I interview business owners all over the country. Okay. What do you do for living out here in Houston? Um, so I have a digital marketing company. How long have you been a business owner for? 12 years. What was the most amount of money that you ever made in a single year? Probably $4.3 million. Gee, $4.3 million. A lot of money? No, actually no, but you know, we always put God first. Ooh. How important has that faith been for you in the success of your business? Everything. Faith is everything to me. I do believe when you don't have faith, you don't really have much of anything. Hmm. Faith, you're dead in the water. Faith without works is dead, so you have to Ooh. have faith and you have to work and together you have success. What was that turning point to financial freedom for yourself? I believe it's when I graduated from college. I think graduating with $150,000 in student loans was crazy. Are you uh-huh. a buyer or a seller? That's a good conversation. I'm a licensed realtor in Florida. And I will say this, a lot of people think, oh, don't rent. No, you actually can rent where you live mm. and you can rent what you own. So there's a different philosophy that I have when it comes down to building equity in real estate. It's building equity, period, because you have to make sure it's a cash flow, it's a good investment. You know they don't teach that in school, right? They don't teach it that's cool, so we got to talk more. <laughs> How old are you now? I'm 36. How old were you when you became a millionaire? 32. What did you do to stand out against 99% of other people? I have a personal brand. I tell everyone I know, I don't care what your occupation is, you need to have a personal brand. Your personal brand drives your business. And I don't take anything personal. Like, literally, mm. if someone says no, it's like, okay, cool. But you're willing to walk away. Oh, yeah. I'm cool. All money's not good money. You got amazing advice. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. You're amazing. That. God bless. Oh, well, fantastic. That was uh, kind of all over the place. I'm really not qualified to comment on um, whether this is a great uh, business strategy for you as far as getting into um, real estate. Um, Impressive young woman here, millionaire by the age of 32, but she does bring faith into it. And uh, she mentions that she puts God first, that um, faith of that works is dead. Uh, Obviously, that's cool stuff from my perspective, for sure. Now, maybe it brings up a question about a Christian driving a Lamborghini, or let's just assume she's a Christian. Um, And uh, faith is important to her. That's a biblical uh, phrase. Faith that works is dead. So... So uh, is, it, is it okay, is it cool for Christians to make a lot of money and to drive a really, really sexy car? I remember in the 80s, we listened to talks given by um, Tony Campolo, who was a, a Christian pastor, author, commentator, still around, um, has gotten quite political recently, wasn't quite so much that in the 80s, but he would make controversial comments all the way back then, and he often would say, Jesus would never drive a BMW. He would just like, just be very adamant about it. And um, I think it's not necessarily a stretch to think that Jesus, who said one time, the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Foxes have holes, but the Son of Man has no place, no home. So uh, he was an itinerant uh, preacher who lived uh, by the largesse of his uh, followers and supporters. So it's not like Jesus didn't need money. He did. He needed support, and he got support from people who... um, loved him and uh, wanted to support the ministry. So so that means that Jesus wouldn't have been able to do his ministry without people like Susanna, uh, without people like Mary Magdalene. It looks like Mary Magdalene might have been a person of means uh, around the Lake Galilee region. Um, and then Susanna uh, was a, a, a woman that seems like she also had um, a woman of means. She was a member of of uh, political standing and access to wealth. And the Bible says specifically in Luke chapter 8 that she supported Jesus uh, and his disciples. So so these uh, specifically wealthy females, it's interesting that they're mentioned. In fact, a lot of the women that are mentioned in the New Testament larger community seem to be women of means and women who are running businesses. Uh, you got Susanna, you got uh, Mary Magdalene. You also have uh, Lydia, who's with the first... Christian convert in Europe, and she seems to be running uh, her own business uh, 
uh, trafficking in purple fabric. So, uh, so you can't have, so the Christian ministry it cannot be divorced from its material support. In other words, if everyone in Christian ministry, and that included everyone who taught the faith, everyone who was uh, leading churches, leading ministries, was a person of voluntary poverty, there would be no ministries because all ministries, including Jesus' ministry, took money to operate. So, so that means that there's an intimate connection between people with means and their generosity towards the kingdom, like this woman. So I think it's not, it's far too simple to say that Jesus would have never driven a BMW as if to say no follower of his should ever drive a BMW, or in this case, uh, a Lamborghini. Um, I think what's better to say is that followers of Jesus are differently enabled, uh, both in terms of their spiritual gifting and in terms of their financial uh, wherewithal, but that every single follower of Jesus has been called to give. We're all called to be givers. And if you have been enabled by, like some of these early, uh, early uh, New Testament disciples, like Susanna, like Lydia, like Barnabas, Barnabas, who, by the way, was one of the early people in the early church who, uh, who had lands, and they sold the lands and delivered it to the apostle, the, the money from the sale, delivered it to the apostle's feet, and, um, uh, and then it was used for distribution for kingdom um, stuff. So... Uh, what's critical is that this person is not just putting God first, like, God, please bless my business. I'm assuming that's involved in her uh, entrepreneurship, is that she dedicates her, her living and her uh, money-making to God, invites God into the process. God, make, help me have wise decisions. Help me run this business uh, according to Christian principles. That would mean how I treat my clients, how I treat my, my staff. All that stuff would be part of bringing faith into her business, but then also whether that business and its proceeds are generous with the kingdom of God, because that was the direct New Testament connection, that there were people who funded the work of God from the very beginning. And you even taught, you see that in, in Paul's letter to 1 Timothy, command those who are rich in this world to be generous with God um, and God's work in this world. So, um, the call is not for everyone to embrace voluntary poverty uh, and to be an itinerant preacher the way Jesus was. The call is for everyone to be generous with the things of God, with the kingdom of God. And it looks to me like here's an example of it. This beautiful woman um, in her uh, spirit of um, faith that she brings to her entrepreneurship seems like she's a good example of it. And yes, driving what would probably be a $200,000 automobile. So, um, you know, conspicuous consumption is a, maybe another topic. Uh, so we won't maybe get into that about exactly how limited should the Christian's lifestyle be. I do think that Christians should set their lifestyle and not let their, their uh, lifestyle chase their income. So let's say you're, you're, you're graduatingly getting more and more income as you get older. You get more context, you get more experience, and uh, you just make more money. Uh, should your lifestyle just chase your increasing income? Well, I think that that's probably a, a real point for uh, an argument to be made for believers to um, have a standard of living that they set based on the wisdom of Scripture, based on the needs in the world around them, based on the priorities of the kingdom of God, and then as they are uh, differently enabled financially, that that just uh, expands the horizons of what they can give to the to the kingdom of God, as opposed to saying, well, now that we're differently enabled, that automatically means that my lifestyle must bump up and up and up. I think some of the bump up in lifestyle um, should be uh, not necessarily controversial. Um, uh, we certainly, my wife and I, live better than we did when we were uh, 21. Uh, but some things are very similar. I think I actually have older cars than I had when I was 25. Yep, yep, I do. I have older cars than I did when I was 25. So some things about your lifestyle shouldn't chase your income. If we are setting our spending priorities based not on how much money we're making, but based on the wisdom of God's word and on the priorities of the kingdom of God that we set ahead of how much money we're making. All right, well, that was a long thing to say about that one video, but I think uh, some imp really important things come up in that about faith and work and faith and money and how it relates. So um, yeah, hope that you set those priorities uh, thoughtfully and prayerfully in your own life. All right, so that's it for this uh, round of Pastor Have You Seen This. Until next time, see you here.